I want to use this video to show a little bit about the text box function inside Autodesk Fusion 360 in the drawing mode. I'm going to zoom up on the corner here a little bit and then pick on my text box control. It prompts me for the first corner. Left click, let go, drag it out any size you want. Don't worry about the size at this point. You can size it very easily later. So now I've got my text box. First thing you want to probably look at is your font. The font defaults to Arial and you can pick any font you want from the window install Windows fonts. I'm going to use Tahoma and you can pick the size either type it in or pick from the list from previously used sizes. Now just simply start typing. Now you'll notice that if you go outside the text box, there is, is your line of text. If you click on it, you'll see there are two controls. One is the location, left click and drag it where you want to put it. And the other control is a length of line. Now I don't recommend this length of line because it's kind of squirrely. What I would recommend you do is double click on the text to go into the editor and use the diamond at the end of the ruler to size the text box. Now if you notice as the text box gets small, you get word wrap. So word wrap is a part of the text box function. So going back to the uh, text box function over here, you have bold, italic, and underline that's just like any word processor. Click on it and you start typing that mode. Or if you want to, you can highlight existing text and change it to bold or underline or italic. Now it remembers that setting until you take it off, so be sure you take it off whenever you want to. Next one you have bullets. Now bulleting can be either just plain old dots, numbers, or lowercase letters. So if I pick numbers, notice you have a space put in there between the number. That can be adjusted with this little triangle here. Also the little icon be moved with it. That's your left uh, tab stop. So I'll just say this is the first bullet. When I hit enter I get the next bullet. Now if you want a sub bullet just simply hit the tab key. Now if you want something very special, let's say 1A, you can just simply reach over and grab the alphabet and it'll put 1A in. But that's up to you. To get, to get out of that, you simply hit enter twice to get out of the line, and then you can backspace if you want to. The next functions are justification. I'm going to highlight the first line, use it, and do, that's left justification. Do center, right, justify, which is kind of a strange one. It fits it, and it puts spaces between it, and also distribute is very, very strange. So you'll probably use left, center, and right. We'll get to special characters in a second. We want to talk now about these uh, tab stops. There are four types of tab stops. You can left click on it to change between them. The first one is left, center, right, and decimal. So if I want to place a left tab stop, I simply set it to that and click anywhere on the line I want to put it. Now I want to hit tab, we'll go to that tab stop. Okay, so now if I want to go back to the same tab stop, hit tab again. Pardon my typing. Now, I want to demonstrate, oh, by the way, before I go on, I want to tell you how to get rid of a tab stop simply drag it off the line. Now it's no longer available. It's still remember for these lines, but down here it's not available. Now I think you understand a centered and a right, but let's look at the decimal for a second. What I can use the decimal for is to place it anywhere I want the decimal to line up. Let's say I want it right there. I then hit tab stop. That's not right. Let's try I need a little more space. So let's just go ahead and hit uh, tab stop and I'll type in a number. And then I'll hit it again, hit it tab again, and notice it lines up the decimal. 
So that's a decimal tab stop. Of course, to clear that tab stop, I simply left click and drag it off. Notice that you can change the size of the text box down here. Now, if you, I'm going to go ahead and erase, I'm actually going to get rid of this one. So I'm going to click on it and just plain delete it. I'll make a new text box and then import some text. I'm going to go to an outside document and copy some text. I'm going to highlight the text I want and then simply copy it. Back in Fusion, I'm going to paste it with a control V. Now I'm going to change the font. Oh, by the way, you don't have to do what I was doing there. Just hit control A if you want and it'll select it all. And I'm going to change the size to a little larger. I'm going to make it point to, oh, point 0.29. That'd be fine. That's too big. Let's just change it to 0.25. That's still too big. Let's try 0.18. Okay, so there's my text. I changed the size simply by highlighting it and changed the size. Now let's go back into the editor. Now, sometimes you might have long text. You will put it in two columns. So if you grab this little icon at the bottom and move up, you'll make another column. You can move it to any point you want to split the sentence. Now, let me move this thing out of the way. This is the length, the gutter distance, the distance between the actual text. And this is the actual length of the box or the length of the text box. So you can use it to adjust to you whatever you feel fit. Left click outside and you have two columns of text. Now remember, it's better to, to change things from in here instead of going out. Now if you want to go back to a third column, you simply do that. If you want to go back, you drag this one back down to one column. So that's the way you do it. Now let's talk about special symbols. Fusion gives you quite a few symbols. Let's make the text size a little larger. Let's make it uh, 0.38 just so it's a little bigger to see. And we have our symbol text down here. So for example, diameter, center line mark, whatever you may need in this list. Now there are going to be times that you cannot find the symbol you want. So you can go to what they call the Unicode table. Now you can find many Unicode character maps on the internet. You can even use the Windows uh, character map if you like. That's located on the Windows Accessories. Your character map, you can find your characters here also. And if you hover, pick on one, you'll see the codes. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use a character map off the internet. It's much easier to read. I'm going to go to the uh, supplemental one and notice I have many symbols that I don't have in my fusion table. Back to the text you'll see that I don't have these symbols. I don't have send, I don't have register, I don't have copyright, things like that. So let's go back to our table just a second and let's just pick up the send mark. So we look at that we see a code. This is a hexadecimal code to enter this in the Windows environment, all you do is hold down the Alt key, hit the plus on the numeric pad of your keyboard, and then type in the value from the numeric keyboard as well as your other keyboard for letters. So let's go back and enter this the uh, send mark. Let's see what it was. It is 0082. So going back here, my cursor, I click on this, and I go to hold my Alt key down, I hit the plus, and I put 00, zero from the numeric keyboard, shift over to my regular keyboard, hit A, and come back to numeric, hit 2, and let go of the Alt key, and I get a cent mark. So you can enter any character that doesn't appear here by using Unicode. For example, the copyright symbol, going back to our table, is 00A9. So going back to Fusion, hold down my Alt key, hit plus, 00, zero A from the regular keyboard, and then 9 from the numeric pad, let go, the copyright symbol. If you find this method of any entering Unicode characters does not work, it's because you need an entry to your 
uh, register, your Windows register. Now, if you're not comfortable with this process, please don't do this. You can render your system useless by modifying the register the wrong way. Get somebody who knows what they're doing. Under the register, you can find on the user con current user, you'll see the input method, and you need to add this entry. Enable hex numeric numpad regs sc type and the value is 1. Once you add this, reboot your system and you should be able to do the function of any Unicode you want. Let's go back and put maybe the, let's put the uh, register symbol 00AE. Let's do that. So I put my cursor up here, hold down my alt, alt key, hit plus, hold, it, hold down the alt key, 00AE and I get the register symbol. So you can get most any special character that is not listed in the symbols in Infusion by using Unicode.